morning. I'm going to talk to you today about um, a capital investment appraisal question that was in the 2021 uh, paper two, so 7127 2. Um, it was question 16, so it was a 25 mark essay question. Um, so I thought perhaps I'd give you some guidance about how the best way to, to tackle this is. So the thing with the 25 mark essay questions is you're trying to get up a, a chain. Um, of marks according to whether you just apply basic application to your answer or whether you've managed to analyze and evaluate. There are 20 marks available for basic application. That's stating the obvious really and doing very simple calculations. And then a further 20 marks are available for analyzing and evaluating the information, which is bringing your own knowledge of the subject matter um, into the question. So I always think the best way to tackle this is to read through carefully the question, identify any calculations that you can do. Now, nine times out of 10, there will be some numbers in the question. It's very rare that we see a question. Um, they have cropped up from time to time, but it's very rare that we see a question with no numbers um, in there. So they are expecting you to do something with those numbers. So as you read through the question, you should be thinking to yourself, well, what can I do with these numbers? Identify what the problem is. What are they asking you to do? Are they asking you to analyze? Are they asking you to evaluate? Are they asking you to give advice? and make sure that your answer covers those. So there needs to be some sort of conclusion. If you're asked to advise directors, for example, then you need to state clearly what your advice is. Um, things to be aware of are not writing contradictory statements. So, you know, for example, they should choose option A because, and then writing directly below that, they should choose option B because. So that isn't making a decision. You need to be saying reasons that they might accept option A or reasons that they might accept option B or negatives for uh, you know, accepting option A are as follows. And then at the very end, make a really clear statement. Uh, in my opinion, they should accept option A or option B and then justify it with a reason. Um, so let's go back to this um, information. We've got, um, what have we got here? So the directors of A PLC, a car manufacturer, are considering investing in a project, developing an electric car. Um, and this is due to the UK government proposing to ban the sale of all new petrol and diesel cars from 2030. So it would appear that this company haven't really got a choice. They're going to have to um, produce an electric car. Otherwise, potentially, they'll go out of business, um, provided, obviously, that all their customer base is in the UK. Other countries around the world probably won't be banning um, petrol and diesel cars. So one thing we don't know here is, uh, we might find out as we, as we read through it, but we don't know whether they're operating just in the UK or worldwide. So, um, you know, that's something to consider. Remember, we're trying to find um, limitations to the data as we go through. So they're going to put in an initial investment of 15 million. Um, the estimated life of the project is 10 years. Um, net present value is 750,000. So what that means is that the project will add 750,000 pounds worth of value to their business over the 10 years, which doesn't seem a great return bearing in mind that they are risking 15 million pounds in the initial investment. So I'd be kind of questioning that. The other thing is that it's a project that goes over 10 years and we know that cash flows, when we're trying to forecast them, get less accurate as time goes on. Um, the payback period is eight years. That's a long way um, into the project. So, you know, again, if the cash flows are, are slightly wrong, then we could find that actually the, the project doesn't pay back at all. Um, it's going to be financed by a 9% bank loan. Now, if we look carefully at the figures here, this was a 2021 paper. We've got nine years until this new legislation comes in. But this bank loan is going to be repayable after five years. So it's halfway in to the project. So that's a lot of money they're going to need to find in, in five years' time um, or potentially refinance. So uh, we know there's been some spectacular failures of, of real companies um, in the past because they've tried to refinance um, when they're not doing quite as well as they were when they took the original debt on um, and, uh, and have failed to do so and have ended up going under. Um, so they're going to get a 9% bank loan. We could be working out the amount of interest, 9% on 10 million. You know, how much is that going to be each year? They're also going to do a rights issue. So remember, a rights issue is where we sell shares to our existing shareholders, £5 million worth. So the beauty of that is it's permanent capital. It won't need to be repaid. Um, dividends are optional. There shouldn't be any risk of losing control of the business, provided everyone takes up their rights. But of course, the danger is that they might not all take up their rights. And um, you could find that the, the share issue doesn't raise the £5 million. And then because not everyone has taken up their rights, there could be some issues 
with control. Um, it says here that the net present value is calculated using a discount rate of 8%, assuming that cash flows occur at the year end. So the discount rate of 8% is to take into account things like the cost of capital, opportunity cost if they're putting money out of deposits, that kind of thing, and, and also inflation over the 10 years. So that's not a very high rate to be discounting it by. So you could kind of ask, you know, especially if the loan interest is 9%, is that really high enough? We can ask the question, we don't know. Um, and remember that that's what's been used to calculate the net present value. So if we'd maybe push that up to 9%, we might find that actually it doesn't offer any present value at all. Um, the net present value, as I said, is calculated on the discounted cash flows. The payback period is, is calculated on the raw cash flows. So, you know, that's, that's just quite simply how long it takes to pay back that initial 15 million investment from the cash that's generated. Um, we've got some information here about the statement of financial position. So we can see equity and non-current liability. So I'd be thinking to myself, well, this is ripe for calculating gearing. And obviously, if we're going to take on £10 million worth of extra debt and issue £5 million worth of shares, that will affect the gearing. So overall, we're pushing up the, um, the debt, the non-current liabilities, by £10 million, And capital employed is going up by £15 million, Because remember, capital employed is the total of non-current liabilities and the, uh, the equity, which is where this rights issue will be going. So um, we can calculate the gearing. We can see what's happened in the past two years, and we'll probably find that um, the gearing will have increased. So that's going to get you your basic kind of AO2 marks, doing things like calculating the interest, calculating the dividend. It says shareholders currently receive a dividend of 6%. So if we're issuing £5 million worth of shares, then work out what the, the dividend would be. And obviously, there's no obligation to pay that dividend, but if they don't, keep up with you know previous rates of dividends, the shareholders may become unhappy. Um, the directors of A PLC consider that now is the right time to invest in the project due to their competitors already producing electric cars. So what we don't know is you know how far behind the curve A PLC is. Um, are we going to be able to play catch up? Would there be some value into maybe going into partnership with somebody who's already done the groundwork? Um, market research shows that there is a concern that this type of vehicle is not currently made by APLC. However, the company is concerned that their current workforce has no experience or knowledge in this technology. So we can bring into that our knowledge of um, you know, retraining staff. Some of them might be glad to be retrained with some new technology. That might make them more marketable. They'd be able to demand higher wages. Obviously, the downside of that is that they may leave go elsewhere. Um, or some of them might just not want to be tra trained in uh, the new technology. There may be some resistance to change. Um, you may end up needing to make some redundancies and, and re-recruit people. So that could have an effect on the staff morale. So loads of stuff to write about here, financial factors, non-financial factors. And if we look at what we're being asked to do, we've got to evaluate the proposed investment and financing method and advise the directors whether they should proceed with the proposal consider both financial and non-financial factors. So it would be worth at this point making a little plan, doing those calculations that I spoke about um, and coming up with um, pros and cons for the, the project and whether overall you agree that they should proceed with the proposal. Now, just reading through this information, I don't think they can avoid proceeding with this proposal because if they don't, then the chances are they won't have a business. So my feeling on reading this initially is that we do need to go down the route of uh, investing 15 million in electric cars. Otherwise, you know, we're not going to have any any market, nothing to sell to our customers, certainly not in the UK. But obviously, remember that we may have some worldwide customers, but presumably most countries are going to kind of ban petrol and, and diesel cars at some point, you would hope in the future. One other thing you might want to throw in there is obviously electric cars aren't all they're cracked up to be. There's obviously the problem with the, the electricity prices at the moment, um, but potentially an environmental disaster with lithium batteries. So the mining of lithium um, and disposing of the batteries, um, which don't last forever, is potentially going to be an issue. So um, yeah, you might want to stick that in there as well. So for the basic AO2 marks, as I said, calculate things like the interest, the amount of dividend paid, calculate the gearing ratio for 2020, 2021 and 2022, assuming that we take on this, this debt and issue the extra shares, and then go through weighing up the pros and cons. So what you want to do is, is to achieve some sort of balance. So when you think of a point, um, you know, like the gearing, um, 
I don't know, you, you want to say some things that are good about it, some things that are bad about it. Generally, we don't want gearing above 50%. So if you identify that the gearing will go above 50%, then you could point out that that is risky. But then the plus side is that if we can get this loan paid back, then the um, future profits aren't going to be going out in loan interest. They'll be available to pay as dividends. Um, so that's basically how you're going to need to tackle it, thinking about the financial and the non-financial aspects. Let's just have a little look through the, um, the answer. Now, obviously, the answer is presented to make it very easy for the people marking the, um, the papers, but not necessarily the way that you would tackle it. But you can see here, um, basic AO2 application, somewhere in, in there, we need to include the fact that it has got a positive NPV, so therefore it would add value to the business. But obviously, there's the caveat there that it needs to be, we need to realise that these are just based on forecasts, which may not be entirely accurate. Um, we've got the gearing ratios, spoiler alert here, if you haven't already tackled the question and done the calculations. So remember, gearing is your non-current liabilities divided by capital employed, it should say times 100 there to get it into a percentage, but it started at 41.03, went down very slightly in 2021, presumably because the retained earnings increased a bit. And then after the investment, it's going to go up to 51.43%. So that's the basic calculation. You can ignore this one. It's an alternative way of calculating gearing, but we don't tend to focus on that method. Um, it's over 50%. It's risky. So your analysis and your evaluation is going to be looking at what's happened to the gearing. That's a sizable increase, um, and that will make the company more risky, perhaps less attractive to new investors or even exi uh, existing investors. Um, so we can you know, analyze and evaluate that. The interest is going to be 900,000 a year. So that's the basic calculations. And the dividends, 6% on the 5 million will mean a 300,000 pound dividend. But then we can start talking about that. Now, you can choose how you do this. You could do the arguments for and arguments against, or you could kind of play ping pong and, and write with an argument for and an argument against as you go along. So good things about it. It does pay back within the estimated life. But we can say that it's towards the end of that estimated life because it's eight years into a 10 year project could well be risky, especially as the project is in a rapidly changing market. So lots of competition there. Positive MPV does mean that the project is worthwhile. Um, and given the government policy for 2030, they must invest in an alternative to their current production. Arguments against the investment, um, although it's positive, that MPV is small, 750,000 against 15 million is quite a risky um, proposition. The finance method, so the gearing ratio is going to go up. So it's now considered high risk because it's gone above 50%. Um, but then a positive, if we do the rights issue, no dilution of existing shareholder. Um, and because it's a rights issue rather than just a, a sale of shares to the general public, it will be cheaper for them to do. They won't need to advertise um, the shares there. Um, no need to pay back the shareholders, so that's the permanent capital thing. And dividends will only need to be paid when the company is able, although the shareholders have a, an expectation of receiving 6%. So remember that they get to vote at the AGM, <clears throat> and one of the things they'll vote on is reappointment of directors. So if you don't keep them happy with a reasonable dividend or a good explanation as to why you haven't paid one, they may well vote you out. Um, the bank loan has to be repaid, so that's repayable in five years, if you spotted that. Um, which is before the project has paid back. So the likelihood is that they won't have 10 million knocking around to be able to pay that back. So they're going to need to look for refinance. So I'd perhaps be mentioning something about that. Um, the bank loan is going to require interest. Remember, the, the dividends of 300,000 are optional, but the um, interest payment most certainly isn't. And if they don't make that interest payment, then they might find some of their assets will be repossessed. Um, other things to consider. So. Obviously, developing electric cars with lower carbon emissions would be good for the environment. That might help increase sales, increase their market share. Um, we don't know what market, as I mentioned earlier, they sell in, whether it's the UK or overseas. Um, another thing to consider is how long it's going to take to develop these cars as 2030 is only nine years away. So maybe you could suggest they go into partnership with somebody that's already done some of the groundwork, although obviously that would be expensive, um, potentially sharing the profits. Um, existing staff don't have the skills that was identified in the uh, in the question. So staff training is going to be needed. So we've got to think about the financial cost of that and also the non-financial consideration. So things like um, whether they'd be receptive to that or not, and then perhaps the extra you're going to have to pay them because they've got better skills. Um, how reliable is the data? So the cash flows are only estimates and over 10 years, they're certainly not going to be 
terribly accurate. Um, and then overall, we could think about other sources of financing. So could we do it all on shares rather than borrowing the money? Um, debentures are really much the same as a bank loan. Not a great deal of difference there. So um, yeah, there's not very many other sources really, um, unless perhaps they could lease some of their equipment. Um, the other thing to think about is, is the investment in line with the company's objectives um, and ethical stance, the marketplace that it operates in. So this goes back to whether they're UK or overseas. Um, and then it says here that the indicative content is not exhaustive. So other credit worthy material could be awarded. So we have spoken about a few other things that aren't in this model answer. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of an idea as to how to tackle this particular 25 marker and actually 25 markers in general. So remember, read the question carefully, do as many number calculations as you can, um, and then make sure that you write about those and try and achieve some balance. So make sure that you weigh up the arguments for and against something and balance out the financial and the non-financial considerations. And above all, make sure that you include a reasoned conclusion. It needs to be a strong statement one way or the other if you're asked to advise make a decision about something. If you don't do that, then your marks will be limited to level one, which is a maximum of five out of 25. So if you've just written four pages, um, that would be a terrible waste of time if, if you haven't done a conclusion. So one word of advice, perhaps if you're getting towards the end of the exam and you think you might be running out of time, read the information and actually state your decision first to make sure that you're not limited to um, you know, level one. So make a decision and then make sure that whatever you write about following that agrees with your, you know, leads you towards that decision. So you could say, I think that the company should um, invest the 15 million pounds um, because if it doesn't, it's not gonna have um, a future. And these are the reasons why, and then go on to talk about financial, non-financial pros and cons. And then if you are stopped in the middle of it all, you know, hopefully you've managed to get more than five marks. Thanks for watching.